Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus, for your grace, for your mercy, for your favor upon my life. Give me the grace to remain in your presence by your word and by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, you may be seated. It is by his providence, his mercy, that we are gathered in this manner. I will not waste much of your time. I think today we will spend much of our time in prayer. Amen. We will dwell so much in prayer. Shall we open our Bibles this afternoon in the book of Ezekiel? The book of Ezekiel, chapter number 37. We'll be reading from verse 1 up to 5. Then, or let's just read the whole scripture, I mean the whole chapter, so that we have a clear understanding. So we'll read from verse 1 up to 14. I'll be quick in my reading because of time. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord. And set me in the midst of the valley. It was full of dry bones. And he laid me back and forth among them. And I saw a great bones, a great multitude of bones. And the floor of the valley was filled with bones. They were indeed very dry. Verse 3. He asked me, son of man, can it be possible for these bones to live? Verse, it goes on to tell us that, then I said, sovereign Lord, you know alone. In verse 4, then he said unto me, prophesy to these bones. And I said to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 5. This is the sovereign Lord says to these dry bones, I will make breath over you to enter into you and you come, you become alive. And I will attach tendons unto you and I will make flesh come upon you and over you with a skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. As I was, prof as I was, as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, and bone to bone, and I looked, and the tendons and the flesh appeared on them, and the skin covered them. There was no breath in them. Then he said unto me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, say unto it. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds, and the breath came into the slain, and that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath entered them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet as a vast army. Verse 11. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these dry bones are Israel. They say our bones are dried up. Our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open the graveyards, I mean the graves, and bring you up from them. 
I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. And when I open the graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord, your God, who has spoken. I have done it and it is declared as the Lord. Amen. We are at a time when Israel was in time of bondage. Even the person that God used to prophesy to the dry bones was also part of those that were captured. The tribe of Judah and all the other tribes were captured in Babylon. It was at this point in their time and dispensation that God visited Ezekiel and he spoke unto him. Not only speaking unto him, but he took him in the spirit and he took him into a dry valley of bones. For you to understand where the state, I mean chapter uh, 37 is coming from, you need to go back to chapter 36 so that you have the understanding of where the Israelites were at this particular time. I've entitled today's teaching, The Word of God is Life. If you go back in chapter 36, reading from verse 9 to 11, you jump 24 to 28, you understand that they were at a time when they were in bondage. But God had to come unto Ezekiel and he touched him. He laid his hand on him. And when he touched him, the Bible says, he was taken in the spirit. When he was taken in the spirit, he was shown a valley of dry bones. His faith was tested. He was asked, can these dry bones live again? His response was that, Lord, you know. But the big question that I have for you is that what is this dry valley? Many of us, all of us, I should say, we are going through these dry valleys. There are dry valleys in our lives. But minimum family emo tule fuma. You find that in the family everyone is educated, but their papers are on the shelves. That's a dry valley. You find other families. They are well built, beautiful women, but they are not married. These are dry valleys. You find that there are families that have got what it takes to progress spiritually, but there is a force that fights them to the bone. It came to a time when Ezekiel was asked by the Lord, can this situation that you have seen spiritually be reversed? Can these bones Become alive again. And the Bible tells us that it came to a point where God started speaking to Ezekiel to speak to the bones. In the same way, the power is in your mouth. The family that you have found yourself into. The situation that surround your family, the dry valleys that are surrounding your family, the dry bones, there are family members that are just like dry bones. 
family. He's the firstborn, but he's a vagabond. The question is, can that person be revived? Can he be restored? The whole issue concerning chapter 37, it is about restoration. Can you be restored? The teaching of this prophecy does not center on any other thing but restoration. It was a time of trial for Israel. And God raised a prophet. He raised a prophet in the name of Ezekiel. He did not take him to the living, but he took him to a place where the problem was. Today I came to speak to you. You are the one that the Lord has raised today. Out of your family, you could be the only one that is praying. You could be the only one that can reverse things that are going wrong in your family. You are that Ezekiel. You are that prophet that can speak. Remember that the Bible says, in your mouth lie what? Life and death. You can speak life in the dry bones in your family. You can speak life in that dry valley. When I say dry valley, I mean a place that is desolate. There are families that are like that. There is no hope. At this particular time, Israel, they lost hope. If you have read, the Bible is saying, chapter, uh, verse 11, verse 11, it is saying, and then he said unto the son of man, who? Ezekiel. He said, Ezekiel, maybe you do not understand what I'm trying to show you in the vision. These dry bones that you are seeing, it is Israel. It is in a state of confusion. It is in a state where it has no hope. They are speaking. Other version, King James version says, they spoke. Can you imagine? The bones spoke. If anyone here has King James version, that's what he says. The bones spoke that there is no hope for us. For we've been cut off. Meaning there was no connection. Israel had no connection with God until someone stood in the position of God and he spoke the word. I came to speak to someone today that you are that person who can speak into your family and bring what? Life back into your family. You are that person that the family is waiting for. Don't believe to yourself. The word that is in you. Ezekiel tabo mfeshe chimbi. Abo mfeshe chevo. Tell your neighbor. You are a prophet. To your own problem. You are a prophet. To your own problem. Prophesy to your family. Prophesy to that limitation. Speak life to that dead situation in your family. Whatever that you see to be an anomaly, not to quote more. Who are we meaning in the gap? For the Bible says, when God looked down, there was no hope. For there was no one who was standing in the gap. It would take an individual to stand in the gap and speak life. Lesa cannot come down and reverse things. He will need someone who can stand in the gap. God cannot find expression here on earth until he finds a person who can speak his word. Learn from the vision. Why did God not come down and just do it for himself? But he had to use Ezekiel to speak. Turn to your neighbor. Tell them you have the power. That shrine, that altar, that is causing confusion. Tell your neighbor you have that power to overcome them. Look 
10 verse 19 is saying you have the authority and the power to stamp on snake and scorpions by what but why are you allowing the enemy to have an upper hand over you because the bible says you are lacking the knowledge of the word of god if the word of god is in you there is nothing that is impossible with god if you are in partnership with your god there is nothing that is happening in your family which you cannot fail to reverse Moneni, ama lete wafia, mulupu alwesu. Bala ndirefe pakanwa. Na wekala na kanongo. Eh? Balela ndirira mukanongo. Mwemo balela wa muliku kitwe. Mwemo balela wa muliku chipata. Mwemo balela ita, muliku kutari. But you are forgetting that you have the power. Chiwa adi wa maka yesu, ewa bonfia. Why? Because we doubt the word. Today, tell your neighbor, today I'm going to speak to the dead situation in my life. Today I'm going to speak to that dead situation in my family. family. To submit that person to the hand of God. Because the Bible is saying he has laid his hand on you. He will take you today. He will take you to that dry valley. He will take you to that place where the problem is. You don't need to go to the village. There is no need for you to go and search. You don't need to go and search. If you are a prayerful person, God will show you. And you'll be praying here. Things will be happening. Kwakaputa. You'll be praying here. Things will be happening in northern province. Because power is in you. Because the author of life is in you. Ezekiel spoke to the dry bones. And they came life. He spoke and the multitude of soldiers rose. Because of the power of of the word of God. Tell your neighbor, the word of God is life. My brother, my sister, put your faith in the word of God. Don't put your faith in man. Man from time to time, he will fail you. Man from time to time, he will draw you in things that are ungodly. Don't waste your time going to the village to go and raise a finger. Now, it's a panorama to Pepe. You have gone there in your own power. Rather stand where you are. On your altar. And begin to declare. My father you took a Zacchio in the spirit. Take me in the spirit. Show me where the problem is in this family. Nishi abanaba nakashi. Mumulupu olu tabafi alila. Nishi abanaba nakashi. Mumulupu tabopilwa. Why is it that I'm the only one in this family who doesn't take beer? The rest are drunkards. Lay your petition before God in prayer. Then begin to prophesy. He said, son of man, prophesy. He didn't say, Ezekiel, go and look for Jeremiah so that he can help you to prophesy. He said, you are capable. As you are standing there, my brother, brother Edward, you are capable to stand and begin to speak things in the spirit and they will come to pass. Declare, for the Bible says, a new thing and it shall come to pass. I don't know about you. I came to provoke the enemy who has stood in my family. Today I came in power to confront them Enough is enough. Look at you. Look at me. Today it took over to be a Christian. Today it took But when you look at your family, if you are a if you are a no quarter for fifty quarter. Oh, 
The same situations that you see in your family, you are also going through. Brother Edward, no, there is need for us to prophesy. If we'll be waiting for a prophet to come and speak, maybe that time will not be there. Because the Bible has already said that power and authority was granted unto you to speak in the realms. It was given. Tell your neighbor, exercise your authority. As a child of God, exercise your authority. It is in exercising of your authority that you provoke the anointing. If you want to provoke the anointing of our father here, exercise your authority. David was a young man. He faced Goliath. He said, the God of whom? Israel will deal with you today. I don't know about you. I sat down yesterday as I was reading this scripture. There are certain things that were revealed to me concerning my family. I said these are anomalies. I'm coming from a family where diabetes is an issue. I'm coming from a family where glaucoma side problems is an issue. I'm coming from a family where our female folk, they have issues with, with marriages. I came to stand in their gap. I don't know about you. I am standing as the executive of the Mueso family. I don't know about you. I'm not afraid of what they entered into. For the Bible says vengeance is not mine. Vengeance is of the Lord. My point of curse here is that I am standing on the word of God. I am standing on what is written. He said prophesy. When you prophesy, what will happen next? It is not your job. People of God. Brother Edward Direlo. It comes to pass. Why can't we sit on our altar and analyze our family and say this thing, this issue, God, I have come. Take me there. Take me to that place where this began from. Take me to the source. Jesus Christ, when he said that fig tree, when he cast it, it is the whole tree from the root. Jacob said, if the tree is not cut from where? From the root, there is hope that that tree will grow again. Listen to me. If there is something that is happening in the line of your family, which you do not deal with it, one day it will become a tree. And when something becomes a tree, mukula tree, it will require a lot of energy. And you may not have that power. That dry bones, that dry valley, we have the power to speak to that dry bones. We have the power to revive what they stole from us. Somebody is sitting on your destiny and you are comfortable. If you for to have a son, now what you are We have a lesson to my child. Nififin, a guy nine, sixteen, Nishnik, what upon our vid. Tinifia, at least you have got twenty years. In a Paris Kissin, Nishnik, what our vid. What in his CV, Sana, Eobaleland. As if you are going to get a little bit of 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 a 
to look into your life. Look into the generation where you are coming from. Begin to deal with them. Look at what the scriptures is saying. That God will even go to an extent of unearthing what is in the grave for your sake. The grave is not a good place. A grave is a place of the dead. The grave is a dark place. It is a dungeon of death. Some of us, it's a norm in the, in the family. Ukufa, yes, ukufa it's normal. But at an appointed time of God. Not that yali tanti kwa fe November, kwa mbo kutumisha nyama foni. Usheba mwambo kana mshibuka. Tabale, tu mafie. Bale, ipusha nga mudivye wino. Pantu kupafuide pafwa mumo. We are going towards the end of December. Let me remind you this. You need to prophesy. To say, I need to cross. Take me to the next year. I need to cross. Whether they died in December, it is my, not my month to die. Bambi, to learn that was a kamana. Umumu inde, muni isisi inenshi kutulimo. Bambi, muma family, ema wafuina, nga toambo kuipisha umu mwala mfati, baka ntowa fule mu December, batata mu December, bayama mu December, bali konke, nefye, muni shoshi, nefye, imyeshi. There is something demonic. And if we don't realize these things will take over and they will become a cornerstone in our lives. To be a believer is not being a church goer. It is living a practical life of the word of God. Your eyes must open. That's why God has brought you into this place. The Bible says the word of God is what? An enlightenment. It is something that should enlighten your mind to bring to understanding and revelation. Not that that is an anomaly. Because you are a child of God. If you to fumanga ta firenda bwino, tebufa e wakwe. Amen. Are we together, Church of God? Are we here, or we are somewhere? Conditions that come in our lives, yamo tayaba no mo. Ni mi pele fintu fya psana psana ni kumiya fintu fya psana psana. Apa mu ikele, you know. What your family is going through. Today we are just going to deal with our family. As long as our families, they are not in order, our prayer will be limited. Our prayer will be limited. Some of us today from Mayanda, to Isamukuika lech punachimonava kashimuisa, Namu afuma muno. Umbiku ingiroku. Umbia ingiroku. And yet you are calling husband and wife. There is something abnormal. We need to deal with that. And we are going to prophesy. You are going to prophesy to that situation. Apope nemudi. Mualala nda. Kuli that problem. The power has been given to you. Take that bold step. But I am a tutina to have a lumbula mui pepo wayafi wokulala winu. Mwaliba pela platform. You've given the devil who is behind that man the platform. Confront that demon of witchcraft. Deal with it. Cut it from the root. As the Bible says in Jacob that a tree. That is not cut fully. There is hope for it that one day it will sprout. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you.